Oh Lord Jesus, thank you for filling me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for impressing me to make this video. Oh Lord, through this video, let me boast of you and not of myself, Lord Jesus. Let me just magnify you. Let me exalt you. Let me say that you only have the power to overcome the darkness, Satan, sin, and this world, Lord Jesus. Let us not be a part of the world, though we're in it, Lord. But while we're in it, let us make an impact for you, Lord Jesus, and not for ourselves, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, I am so weak and I am so not qualified to do this, Lord Jesus, but you are in me. You are qualified to speak on my behalf, Lord Jesus. Oh, you said that You said that it's not me who speaks, but the power of the Holy Spirit who speaks through me. And when I'm brought to, to councils in front of people, in front of, uh, in front of the leaders of the world, that you speak, Lord. If I get in trouble, you are there to deliver me, Lord Jesus. Oh, I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you're going to bring revival, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are you are always supplying me, Lord Jesus, in my spirit, in my inner being. Let me put off the flesh and let me bring you in, Lord Jesus. Let me bring you into my life, Lord Jesus. But not into my life. Let me conform under your will, Lord Jesus. But I can only do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus, break me from the power of the flesh. And today, that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about the power of the flesh. And the first place I want to go to is Galatians 5. Uh, Galatians chapter 5. And this is a Bible study that I haven't planned, but the Lord said, go for it, Tatsuya. Just go for it with 100%. Through this video, I wish to cease myself. Actually, Galatians 2.20 says it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So you see, when I was walking with the power of the Holy Spirit, after I got back from my evangelism, I was super, so high into the glory realm of the Holy Spirit. That it was not me who lived, but the power of the Holy Spirit that lived in me. It was me who died, died on the cross. I, it was me. I ceased to exist. I ceased to be. And the, it was just the power of the Holy Spirit. I was just walking in his love. I was just one with the Lord. Not like one like the New Age movement, like that sort of occultism or spiritualism. But it was literally that I died. I died. And there was only the resurrection life of Jesus Christ that was flowing through me at that point. And there's no, not been any time that I've had such a powerful experience of the Lord Jesus. And today I want to, I want to just speak through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I do make, make a lot of mistakes. You see, I, I've screwed up many times, but the Lord Jesus lives in me. And the power of the Holy Spirit is that which Satan fears. And that's what I'm going to be speaking today, is through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not me who speaks, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I, I make mistakes here and there. But you see, Jesus likes to work through the dumbest of the people, the dumbest being me, to speak in the most sinful like my, me, so that the Holy Spirit can speak, right? So that's kind of, that's the only way that the, the, that the Holy Spirit works. And you know, and so I want to, want to read Galatians 5. So it says, it says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit lusts against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdery, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and of in like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So you see, so this is the most amazing thing. But you know, when the power of the Holy Spirit leaves me, or I feel less in the Spirit of God, the, my flesh attacks. And this fleshly attack has been more severe recently. You see, the more you're absorbed, the more you experience the power and the joy of the Lord, the more you have a personal relationship with the Lord, the more you put in effort to crucify the flesh daily, the resistance becomes stronger. But that's because Satan 
doesn't want you to succeed through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, it says in Joshua, Joshua, uh, it was, I, I believe it was Joshua 1, 9. But, you know, one of the best ways to crucify the flesh is through the word of the Lord. You know, Joshua says in, uh, let me just go there really quickly. But Joshua 1, 9, it says, um, or one set, or actually it was, man, the Lord Jesus help me. But it says in the end of Joshua that you have to meditate on in this law day and night and you will be successful. So that's the thing, though. We as we try to do that, the flesh becomes more and more resistant. The flesh is some is the power that hates God. It's the power of Satan that tries to rebel against God, tries to go against him. And the best way to do this is just to crucify the flesh. You see, I have to confess this honestly, but recently I've been struggling with, you know, pornography, with going back into homosexuality, with just doing lots of things, you know, trying to trying to gratify the flesh through other means without God. You see, I've fallen into contentions. I've made careless remarks to other people. But you see, like, and I've gotten into so much different types of trouble, which I'm not going to name here. But that's that's just because because I'm not in the spirit. You see, the flesh always rebels against the spirit. The flesh doesn't want to do anything hard for God because that's what, who we are. We, we're actually meant for self-exaltation and for self-preservation, but that's not the gospel. Jesus says to deny yourself, to take up your cross and follow me. That deny yourself isn't, like Brother Jesse mentioned, isn't to Bear your, carry your own burdens. Well, yeah, well, that's what the world tells you. But actually, in the biblical sense, you have to be, you have to be dead to yourself. You have to be dead to sin. You have to literally kill yourself, kill yourself in the spiritual realm. You know, when I became born again, I saw the, saw the Trinity, which I'm going to get into an, at another time. But I saw Jesus. And for the first time, I felt spiritual life. But in order to feel that feel that spiritual life, of course we have to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. That Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and came back to life on the third day. If we don't believe that, we're damned, we're condemned forever. But there's a reason to that. There's a reason. It's because when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we die with him and we come back to life. And the obedience of that, the physical outcome of that is through the baptism. You see, I delayed my baptism for a very long time. And... But for the first time after baptism, I really felt like a man. But you see, we put on Christ. When we die with him in baptism, we put on Christ. We, we become one with him. We, we die to ourselves. That's the whole point of the gospel. And you know, and I just want to read, um, read Matthew here. It's the book of Matthew where it says, before Jesus actually went on the cross. When we look at Matthew chapter um, chapter, I, I believe it was Matthew chapter 20, um, 26. For, for Judas betrayed him. Yeah. So in Matthew chapter 26, um, 26, it says here, you see, it says, then Jesus came with them to, to a place called Gethsemane. And said to the disciples, "Sit here while I go and pray. While I go and pray over there." He took with him Peter and the two sons Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, "My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me." He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, "O Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will." And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spear is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, so there's so much significance. Oh, in verse 42, before I forget. And again, a second time, he went again and prayed, saying, Oh, Father, if this cup this cup cannot pass away from me. I drink it. Yet yeah, your will be done. So you see, there's so much significance here. You see, Jesus said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful onto the point of death. Are you kidding me? 
that's the way that's the way that I should live as a Christian. I should be sorrowful to the point of death. I should I should to enjoy you see one of the people said this during the Christians on campus conference. They said that the man who fears God the most, the one who sincerely desires, who sincerely thirsts for God, that person is very much scared. The, the scariest thing ever in his life is to lose the presence of the Lord, to offend the presence of the Lord. That's how we should be. We should be scared to offend the presence of the Lord. And so this is really, really, really significant. You see, it says, my soul, soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even on to the point of death. So you see, that's what we should be like. We should be praying that the soul dies every day so that we could experience the resurrected life of Christ. We have to daily crucify ourselves. We have to daily kill ourselves by carrying the cross. The cross. We should hate ourselves onto the point of death. We should hate ourselves the most. The person who the Christian hates the most is the self. That's what we should be. We should hate the self. I need to hate myself, literally. Hate everything that I am. Hate myself the most because I'm a wretched sinner. You see, that's the thing though. You know, like, you know, I'm just going to say this, but we have free will. That's true. But our free will, every time we utilize our free will, we always choose hell. That's how bad we are. That's how corrupt human beings are. That's why we have to die to ourselves. We can't let ourselves be our own judge. We have to let God be the judge. We cannot do the choosing of our own. We have to let the world know that God chose us and we didn't choose God. It says in the Bible that that those who did not seek me found me. Guess what though? Guess what? We, through our own sinful nature, cannot do anything good for God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But yes, Paul says that I am the worst of the worst. I'm the worst of the worst. I'm the most sinful person ever to be. And that should be our mentality as Christians is that we ourselves, we are the most sinful people. We should hate ourselves. We should hate sin. But more than hate sin, we should hate ourselves. Because out of the heart flows wicked thoughts of adultery, theft, Leviciousness, all the drunkenness, envy, maliciousness, all of that sort of thing comes from the self. We should hate ourselves even onto the point of death. That's what Jesus prayed right here. That that the person we should hate the most is the self. Is the self. There's nobody, nobody else that we should hate. Yes, we should go tell the gospel to the dying world. And that's why if we hate ourselves the most, then we're be going to be able to be merciful towards other people. The more we hate ourselves, we love the Lord and we follow through. We naturally have the fruits of the spirits and obedience. But until we recognize that we are sinners in need of a savior, we are sinners, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But yes, I'm so sinful that I deserve hell. At that point, only can we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, his mercy, his grace, his death on the cross. And we could see that we were crucified with him. It's a miraculous thing that we cannot crucify ourselves. We're made for self-exaltation, self-preservation. But it's only Jesus Christ who said yes to the cross. And that one man, you see, we're, we've been all been sinful. You see, one man corrupted the whole earth, but one man can redeem the whole earth. The first Adam was brought death and sin into this world, but the second Adam brings life and righteousness onto the earth. And that second man said, yes, I'm going to be the first one to die on the cross, to hate self, the self the most. And we could follow in his footsteps thanks to the power of the Holy Spirit who chooses us because we can't choose Jesus. Yes, Jesus died for all of us. But we can't choose Jesus every time we say no to Jesus through our free will. It's only the power of the Holy Spirit. And we walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. When the power of the Holy Spirit moves and says, yes, I'm going to go save that soul. We step in. We step in. And the power of the Holy Spirit overtakes us. Overtakes us. Overtakes us and speaks through us. And we don't have to speak. We just rely on his grace. His, You see, it says in Ephesians, by grace you're saved through faith. Not of your works, lest any man should boast through grace. By grace we're saved. But that grace is, gives us the faith to believe in the death, how painful that death was, the empathy and the sympathy and the compassion of our to onto the Lord Jesus is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Only God can empathize. 
Only the Father can empathize with the pain that Jesus experienced on the cross. We have no ability for compassion and desire. The only the Holy Spirit restrains evil in this world, restrains evil in our lives, gives us a conscience to and a discernment to know between good and evil, tells us the right things to do, but that's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we're able to do all of these things, not of us. And that's the whole power that we need, that we need for an experience with the Lord Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord that he's giving me these words. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. And, you know, Jesus and Peter thought he could save the Lord Jesus, but he couldn't. He denied him three times. Judas killed himself. But that's what we do as human beings. We say that we're so loyal to other people, yet we're not. We're not willing to go through the hard experiences. We need to slap on the face. Every time you see, and sometimes it can be the opposite thing. You see, we we're so we think we're so sinful and we can't be forgiven by the Lord. And we go down this depression tunnel and that's the tendency of my flesh most of the times. But that's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that he could redeem us and that, that we could actually gain the, the not just head knowledge, but heart knowledge and spirit knowledge that Jesus died on the cross for our redemption, that we could rejoice in the death of ourselves and the death of Jesus, that we could rejoice in the pains and the sufferings of this world. You see, that is so absurd that we could just enjoy the death of ourselves, the most painful and cruel things. Yet we know that there's reward in this end because Romans 8, 8, 18 says that the sufferings of the present time is not worthy of the glory to be compared in the world to come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So you see, this is the most amazing thing though. Jesus said that, nevertheless, your will be done. You see, Satanists say that, you know, live as thou wilt. But Jesus says, live as God will. Live as Jesus will. Live, live as another person will. We serve one another. Not only that, we lay our lives down for our brother or sister. But not only that, the highest command is to love thy God with all thy soul, thy, all thy strength, and all thy might. New Agers say they love God. But have they really denied themselves? Have they really crucified themselves? Have they really went through the pain that Jesus did? And if they only knew that, they would turn to the Lord Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord that I'm able to understand that, but it's not through me. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's through the power of his grace that I could understand what Jesus meant when he said, watch and pray. Or Father, if this, is, if, this cup, if this cup cannot pass from me unless I drink it, nevertheless, your will be done. Thank God I can understand that. Thank God that I could emphasize with the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God that I know the fear of the Lord because through the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Through the fear of the Lord, I could deny myself in my own flesh. Jesus was able to do that. Jesus was able to say no to the flesh because, because he knew the fear of the Lord more and he knew the joy of the Lord. We must understand the holiness of the Lord and the love of the Lord at the same time. Praise the Lord. And you see, and this is the thing though, when we fall into temptation like I did, you know, because I want the comfort of the Lord, but I need to deny myself, but my flesh doesn't want me to deny myself. So it becomes more resistant and I become more stupid though. You see, you see, when we, I gain an open door for the flesh to come in and to attack me. Then I become more stupid and then I do more stupid stuff and then I say more stupid comments. But I should only let the Lord speak though, because you see, I let the speak, my freaking flesh speak through me all the time. Oh, for, forgive me, Lord. And let the flesh speak through me and I make stupid choices and I become confused like Jonah who, who didn't have enough love for the other people or for anybody. And you see, and we, we always have that tendency to become fearful because we're in the flesh. We fear the fear, not, we don't have a healthy fear of the Lord. We just fear that we become destroyed. But fear of the Lord is different. We, by the fear of the Lord, we acknowledge the holiness of the Lord. We acknowledge that, yes, he is the right one. And if we deny him, there's severe consequences. And if we deny him, we don't enjoy eternal pleasure in our spirit. You see, the flesh has a uh, has just anger towards the Lord. But you see, that's the whole thing, though. It tries to deny the Lord all the time. So that's why you need to be able to resist temptation. But if I'm, I'm only able to resist temptation as I'm enjoying the Lord so much. And you see, you see, in Genesis, and the Lord, I think, also wants me to mention this lastly. But in Genesis, Jesus was about to be crucified on the cross. 
when he said that, nevertheless, Lord, you see Ishmael, um, Abraham was impatient. Impatience is, uh, is something of the flesh. The flesh is impatient. It w doesn't want me to uh, acknowledge that the Lord has a promise for me. I need to wait on the Lord. The flesh wants to act immediately before the Lord does it. Because the flesh doesn't want to wait on the Lord. The flesh hates the Lord. The flesh wants to say, hey, I'm more faster than the Lord. The convenience, pleasure is, is of Satan. He's like, oh, quick spirituality without the fear of the Lord, without having to endure suffering and pain. I'll just give you the joy, peace, and what, what not. But you see, everything comes at a price. The New Age doesn't teach you that. You see, that's the whole thing Satan does. He wants a counterfeit. He wants something easier than the Lord. But there is nothing easier than the Lord. And it says, come to me, all you who are weary, who are burdened. You see, the Lord has his opportunities, but Satan tempts us with something pleasure. You see, when we have a lack in our soul, Satan wants to manipulate that, to, to manipulate what God can sincerely fill us with, and fill us with a counterfeit. You see, that's the whole thing Satan wants to do. But that's why we need to trust in the Lord. Ish Ishmael was a product of that. Abraham was impatient, or Sar Sarai was impatient. He tempted Abraham to have sex with a, a slave, the slave called Hagar, and they bore Ishmael. And Ishmael is a, is a symbol of the flesh, and Isaac is the symbol of the spirit. And Isaac was the one sacrificed. You see, that's the whole thing. Jesus was a spirit man. We have to be spirit men too. We have to deny ourselves. So that's all I'm going to say today. Deny ourselves, crucifying the flesh. You see, I got tempted in, in here and there with the flesh. But ultimately, I have to deny myself. I have to crucify the flesh. It's so hard to do that. But you see, only by the power of the Lord Jesus, I'm able to do that. If I love him, I will keep his commandments. But only true love is found from the spirit of truth in the Lord Jesus Christ. Suffering and denying myself for the upholding of the gospel. Amen. Amen. In Jeremiah 17, it says, um, so let me just go there really quickly. And I just want to end with this. But in Jeremiah 17, it says, um, it says, Cursed is the man who trusts in a man and makes his flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. He shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He shall be a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and it will not fear when the heat comes. Its leaf will be green, and it will not be anxious in the day of drought, um, or nor will cease from yielding fruit, the fruit of obedience, the fruit of the spirit, right? So basically, um, the flesh wants us to trust in another person, but we have to trust in the Lord more and more, and that's how we're going to be able to be in the spirit. Don't let men persuade you of what you should do. Trust in the Bible, trust in the Lord Jesus, and everything shall go smooth for you. And I haven't done that enough. And that's why I've been having so much failures. But you know what? I should be more trusting of the Lord. And I should ignore what other people say. Honestly, I should have a day where I just shut down what people say. Shut everything that people say. And just declare the promises of the Lord. No matter if people hate me or like me, I don't really care. You see in the social distancing thing, you know, like people say, oh, you know, social distancing. But it's really hypocritical, though, because, you know, people don't social distance, honestly. So if the social distancing activists want to be philosophically consistent with their whole stuff, then they should actually social distance. You see, so that's why we can't trust in a man, because you see, man is so hypocritical in whatever they do or whatever they promote. You see, the whole coronavirus pandemic where in the ways that people are trying to prevent, yes, they're the right methods, but men come up with these hypocritical devices. Ultimately, we should trust in the Lord of how to deal with this COVID-19 thing, but the whole whole community, the whole people out there aren't trusting in the Lord Jesus, and they should. You see, and I'm a hypocrite too, so I shouldn't be saying that, but you see, but the Lord Lord told me that. The Lord said yes, you see, and you know, like people tell me, oh, like, you know, with evangelism, like Tatsuya, like no person is going to come if a person has a sign that says Jesus or hell, but you know what? I somewhat agree with that. You know, some, some people don't need it. Let me just go to Jude right there. You see, Jude says that um, the book of Jude says this, actually, the book of Jude, and I'm going to end here with the book of Jude, um, with the book of Jude, um, Jude 1, it says, um, let me just go there really quickly, oh Lord Jesus, help me out here, um, so in Jude, which is just before Revelation, it says, um, it says here, 
Yeah. And so, and on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. You see, sometimes we need to preach fire and brimstone. You see, there were so much during the first and second great awakening, through the Holy Spirit revivals, through the Azusa Street revivals, through the Pentecostal revivals, through the Jesus movement in the 70s. There was fire and brimstone preaching. Sometimes we need to go to fire and brimstone to save people from hell. And I'm not going to back that down because the, the Lord says that. And I'm not going to back down by some, you know, washy-wishy gospel. Yes, a personal relationship is good, but sometimes I need to trust in the Lord and be harsh with other people. You see, I'm not saying I should be harsh with, with everybody, but sometimes I need to do that to save a soul. To save a soul, sometimes I need to point out, point out lots of sins. And, and moreover, it's not just fire and brimstone preaching against other people. I need to do it more to myself. I need to be like, Tatsuya, you shouldn't do this. I should put a gun to my head. To, you know, you see, I should actually die to myself, like metaphorically speaking, put a gun to my head and, you know, be like that. But honestly, crucify myself, crucify myself, experience the most pains that I could experience the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, also, I need to rebuke this stupid thing that another person told me that was super anti-biblical, but it was somewhat biblical. You see, Satan mixes a truth with a whole with a lie. You see, yeah, Jesus sat with sinners, but that was because there was a transformational love, you see, and that was only by the power of the Holy Spirit. No man can transform a person except God himself, and by grace we're saved through faith. What? Why, why, dumb, why do we believe in this dumb guy who died on the cross? Seriously? Like, that's going to change us, but it, 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 yeah, well, it does. It does change us because you see, sin is so violent that we need to we needed to see that violence two thousand years ago, and see Jesus die on the cross. Yes, that's how violent sin was, and that's how much sin hurts us. And Jesus wanted to show us that, so he went and died on the cross up there. But in any case, Jesus doesn't want us to. Okay, and and this is what the Holy Spirit says says through the Bible that Jesus not only rebuked the Pharisees and all the religious leaders, okay, Jesus rebuked his own disciples the harshest. He said to Peter, you're Satan. You know, you, Jesus presented the gospel, uh, foreshadowed and prophesied the gospel that he's going to die on the cross and rise again. And that's the only way to be become connected with the God. When he preached the gospel for the first time to his disciples, when he revealed the gospel before he was crucified, he said, yes, Lord, I'm willing to die. You see, he was 100% excited to die, excited to die so that he could experience the glory of God. When he was presenting that to, to Simon Peter, Simon Peter rebuked him and said, no, don't do that, Lord. And he said, Satan, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of, you see, I rebuke you, Satan. You see, the Lord Jesus called, <laughs> called, called um, Simon, Simon Peter, Peter, Satan, you see, and J Jesus said to Judas, it would, it was better for you if you have never, you were never born. Are you kidding me? Like Jesus said to Judas, it was better if you were never born. What? Because he's going to face eternal damnation. That's how Jesus was. That's how severely Jesus rebuked the disciples. Well, I mean, he said to the Pharisees, woe, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. But you know what? But he, he said the most harshest things, the most meanest things to his disciples. Honestly, though, don't don't have a washy wash. You see, Jesus, you know, one person said that Jesus isn't like a Hitler, but Jesus isn't also like a hippie. But honestly, this society wants a hippie Jesus more. So stop believing in the hippie Jesus. Start thinking about how much Jesus rebuked other people. Yes, he was very merciful towards other people, but to his own disciples, yeah, right. Okay, so so if we are close to somebody and the person, the more closer that person is to the Lord Jesus, the more that person, the Lord has revealed to that person, the, the person who has more revelation of God, he should be condemned the harshest if they sin and depart. And that should be me too. The Lord should, somebody should condemn me more harshly if I do anything badly. They should say, Tatsuya, I rebuke you. Tatsuya, you're Satan. I don't care if somebody says that. If somebody says the meanest insults to me because I, I went against the Lord Jesus, then do it by all means. And if I resist, if I get violent, then, oh Lord, send me to hell to be burned forever because that's what I deserve. Amen.
So finally, I just wanted to add here, but I lots of times I'd feel the power of the Holy Spirit, but this isn't just an ordinary soul feeling. Like the soul feeling is might be an emotion that's not from the from the Lord Jesus. But if but you see, but Scripture is supposed to make us conform to the image of God or conform to the feelings of God. You see, God also has feelings. Some might some op open or some people might deny that God also has emotions or feelings, but He is a person too. So He does have a certain boundary. He has what what He likes and what he dislikes of course what he likes is it's purely righteous it's justice righteous righteousness uh true truth but everything he hates is like wickedness <clears throat> sin immorality anything like that he hates so we could establish that he's a person and he does have um feelings himself but those feelings aren't usually aligned with ours and that's where the where it comes in the difference uh, between the soul and the spirit so i just want to go to hebrews 4 12 and guys if you really don't know the difference between the soul and the spirit i mean honestly how can you discern what the will of the lord is so it says in hebrews 4 12 that the word of the lord is sharper than a du double-edged sword um, piercing, dividing the, the soul, and I need to go to Hebrews 4.12, and I have to memorize this. Oh, Lord Jesus, please help me. So Hebrews 4.12, I'm just going to go there really quickly. Uh -huh. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Okay. For the word of the Lord, Lord is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Wow, that's what I needed. Amen. So, so, <laughs> so praise the Lord. So the word of the Lord is is really sharp. It's it's something that that it's the sword of the spirit it like it says in ephesians it's literally an offensive weapon against the spiritual hosts of wickedness and spiritual high places but it's also also a weapon to actually crucify ourselves or literally to speak to to symbolically or spiritually or metaphorically kill ourselves it's so powerful and also and this this also and it says here divides between the soul and the spirit of course the spirit is we're redeemed our spirits are redeemed our soul is against the spirit our soul is the flesh it divides between that and it's a discerner so we could understand what's not of god and what is of god so whether our thoughts are from jesus from god or not from god and also the intents of our heart is our heart actually truly in love with god what's parts of our heart are for God and against God so it's really powerful and that's why I say feel because we could feel him but we need to do that through the power through the word of God and through discernment we could understand that we're actually in the spirit in the spirit with the Lord Jesus we're actually in quote quote in spirit or aligned with the Holy Spirit in that the Holy Spirit is actually in us and working through us. It's only through the scriptures we could understand. In using scripture accurately and in context and in the way it's supposed to be so that we could align ourselves more closely with God. Amen.